You're watching Vancouver Television. We're alive. Good morning! Zero degrees, seven o'clock. You're watching Vancouver Breakfast. I'm Linda Freeman. And I'm Amr Halim. It's actually 6 a.m. They're uh, trying to confuse us. We're ahead of ourselves this morning, a little ahead of ourselves. So don't worry, don't panic. No, You're no, not an hour late. Out. Oh my God, I'm late. No, no, calm down, calm down. It's okay. It's, uh, it is zero degrees, though, because we're wearing these gloves. I borrowed this from our uh, assistant director, Carning. Thanks, Carning, uh, to keep me warm. <laughs> keep you nice and warm. Yeah, gloves are good, a good thing today. Uh, you're listening to Garnet Edwards inside playing some great music. Yeah. Uh, they've got a couple of uh, videos out on the Country Music Network. Yeah. We're going to be talking to them and listening to them a little bit later on in the program. Thankfully, their sounds are keeping us warm this morning. Also, are you planning a trip? Well, pack one of these little portable toothbrushes, and we'll also tell you what you need to do to, uh, to be safe during the holidays or your holiday uh, as far as keeping your belongings close at hand. Carbon monoxide, another problem this time of year. Fireplaces, you might forget to keep the vent open. Could cause some problems. We're going to talk about how to put a carbon monoxide uh, detector into your home and how it could save your life. And are you thinking about volunteering this year? Well, Ted will show you how you can get involved in your community, Ted. Hey, I'm going to be talking to William Hampson Wong this morning from the Burnaby Volunteer Center. Because you know what? If you volunteer, you can expand your social life and do good for all of humankind. Coming up here on the big remote location. Ah, uh, lovely music. And that is, in fact, keeping us warm this morning, thankfully. It is, but it is a chilly day, yes. and we're going to see cooler temperatures for about the next three or four days, but lots of sunshine to tell you about. So today, mainly sunny, a little on the cool side, a high of only about three degrees, and a minus five overnight. So yeah, well, a we're, cool. we're freezing on the sidewalk, but someone who's nice and warm is our friend Sonia Nordahl up in the VTV newsroom. Sonia? <laughs> Thanks very much, Amari. You're right, it is nice and warm in here. Good morning. Well, Vancouver City Council is considering a new weapon to catch motorists who don't routinely pay their parking fines. Computerized ticketing machines will enable meter checkers to find out on the spot how many unpaid tickets someone has, and if it's too many, the car may be towed and impounded. The city expanded its meter system last April. They increased the hour meters are in operation to make up for a $26 million budget shortfall. And they now plan to continue Sunday and holiday meter parking. The plan still, however, needs final approval from City Council. Police in Surrey are still looking for leads into the murder of Nirmal Singh Gill. He was killed outside the Surrey Sikh temple Sunday morning. On Tuesday, reports surfaced that a controversial Sikh organization had threatened Gill last year. The International Sikh Youth Federation held a press conference denying any involvement in the attack and then offered up a $5,000 award to any information that will lead to an arrest in Gill's murder. Police say the driver of this BC Tell truck did an amazingly good job of avoiding pedestrians and other vehicles after the wheel of his truck fell off. The driver managed to pull off the road but ended up going through a residence yard before hitting a garage near Canada Way on Fulwell Street. Police are investigating the cause of the faulty wheel. The driver was taken to hospital suffering from minor head injuries. Many Squamish residents are still reeling from a New Year's Eve murder of prominent lawyer Bob McIntosh, and yesterday hundreds gathered to pay their last respects. There weren't even enough seats in the auditorium for everyone who wanted to say goodbye. McIntosh leaves behind two young children and a wife. He was killed while checking up on a rowdy New Year's Eve party at a neighbor's house. 20-year-old Ryan McMillan of Squamish has been charged with manslaughter. Turning to national news, the worst case scenario occurred for hydro workers in Quebec this morning. More than 700,000 homes in the southwestern part of the province are without electricity after a new storm knocked down more transmission towers. Crews had restored power to about 350,000 homes earlier, but their effort was in vain. The ice storms have forced thousands of people to seek emergency shelters and community centers to keep warm. The forecast is saying the freezing rain may last until Friday. Montreal was the hardest hit. Besides the power outages, thousands of trees were knocked down. Schools and businesses have been closed, and some old power generators have caused a number of houses and apartment fires. The job of sentencing Terry Nichols for his role in the Oklahoma City bombing has now fallen on the judge who heard the case. A jury had deliberated on Nichols' sentence for two days but failed to reach an agreement and told the judge they were deadlocked, an impasse that stunned and angered the victim's relatives. The lack of consensus means that Nichols escapes the death penalty given to his co-conspirator, Timothy McVeigh. Meanwhile, heavy rains in southeast Texas have brought some disturbing memories back for residents there. In October, 1994 floods in the area left thousands homeless. This time, the rains weren't as severe. About 18 centimeters fell, forcing a number of evacuations. 
Police in California have busted the biggest car insurance fraud in the state's history. A two-year investigation led to the arrest of 86 people. Insurance companies estimate they lost between 21 and 30 million dollars through a scam, which saw the same luxury cars appearing in claims over and over again. The cars have been reported stolen but kept coming up in accident claims. Most of the claims were traced back to one man, the former owner of a collision shop.